Wetlands Day recently passed on February 2nd. Do you remember any highlights that were made about wetlands in Trinidad? Do you receive any benefits from wetlands? Do you think they affect you in any way? Do you believe wetlands are worth protecting? Most people think that wetlands are wastelands and only suitable for clearing for agriculture or building infrastructure. The Beetham Landfill, located north of the Carney Swamp, is an example of this. It is located on a wetland but is also a dump, even blanketing the capital with smoke in 2014 and 2015. On the other hand, wetlands such as the Nariva wetland are protected and provide numerous ecosystem services. In the 1960s, a convention was negotiated for the conservation and sustainable use of wetlands. This convention on wetlands was signed in Ramsar, Iran in 1971, but came into effect in 1975. Today, more than 2,200 sites have been declared protected Ramsar sites. Trinidad and Tobago has three of them. They are the Nariva Swamp, the Carney Swamp, and the Poco Reef Bon Accord Lagoon complex in Tobago. Located on the east coast, Nariva spans over 6,000 hectares. But what ecosystem services does such a large area provide? The objective of this study is to determine the public's perceptions and knowledge of wetlands from persons in rural communities and from tertiary educational institutions. This was done using interviews. We will take you along on this journey on what we have found about wetlands and the ecosystem services they provide using the Nariva Swamp as a case study. Wetland is a body, um, area of land where um, it's saturated with water. Mm -hmm. so do you know what a wetland is? Uh, no. Okay. You sure? Take that swamp. A wetland is an area of <laughs> um, land, but there's also water, hmm. um, trees and fishes and other animals that can live both on in the water and on land. Oh. Do you know what a wetland is? No. Do you know what is a wetland? Yes. What is a wetland? A wetland is a place kind of like surrounded by water yes, and it's wet. Sometimes it's part of land and water in one place. And you could describe it like that? Yeah, but sometimes it could be a little moisty, sometimes a little dryish. Depends on what weather. You understand? But where are we from? Yeah. We have plenty of wetland. It's like Narva, Tamaki. Countryside, yeah. corns, fish, crab, everything. We everything. Yeah, we bless, <laughs> we bless them. We have everything. This basic definition encompasses so many vegetative types that in turn support a host of ecosystems and their associated characteristics. Ecosystem goods and services refer to all of the various benefits that humans derive from an ecosystem, whether they are enjoyed indirectly or directly. Goods and services can be divided into four main groups, namely provisioning, regulatory, cultural and supporting services. Within the concept of ecosystem services are ecosystem functions, which refers to the habitat, biological or system properties, or processes of ecosystems. Ecosystem functions are effectively the link between the services and the processes that occur within an ecosystem. While generally people have some idea of what wetlands are, we observe that there is not a lot of information currently available on wetlands and their diversity in the public. This was evident when we asked respondents if they had heard of World Wetlands Day. Only 27% of respondents in rural communities had heard of World Wetlands Day, and even less than that, 17% from tertiary institutions said they had heard of it. Each respondent was then asked if they believed they received any benefits from wetlands. Interestingly, less respondents, 61% from rural communities, believed they received benefits from wetlands, compared to 73% from tertiary institutions. Can you describe some of the benefits of the wetlands in the river? Well, the benefits of the Nariva wetland for the communities that live around it, it sustains them by um, having fish, conks, uh, game species, and even um, agricultural land. Mm -hmm. So the, the communities around there would use those resources to, for their livelihood. Okay. 
the wet clan, the swamp clan, to get material to do a hand work and stuff like that. And making a lot of tourists and stuff like that in the wet clan community, especially in the narrow swamp. Yes, we live in on the east coast, Mayaro area, Manhattan area, right? And I've noticed over the past couple of years, the number of coconut trees along the coastline has significantly dropped. You know, the coconut trees is our first line of defense when it comes to storms and high winds, right? And seeing that, that together with the coconut trees depleted, together with um, the cutting down of trees in the swamp, Trinidad in particular, we, we have limited or no line of defense when it comes to high winds and hurricanes. 80% in rural areas and 82% in tertiary institutions could name a benefit of wetlands. It was observed that rural areas were more likely to name the various ecosystem goods they received from wetlands. So responses such as food, biodiversity, habitat for animals, um, agriculture and tourism as well as livelihoods were very common. Uh, other less common responses we got were coastal protection and flood prevention. So now we turn our attention to the experts to ask them their opinion and get their perspectives on other very important ecosystem services of wetlands such as Nariba Swamp. Mangrove plants by the virtue of their structure provide significant protection. They actually trap sediment, so they are actually the front colonizers of land. So by trapping this sediment, they are at the forefront and therefore when you have strong waves, strong tides and storm conditions, mangroves are actually a protective barrier. So if we remove mangroves, we are going to lose that important surface. And of course, there are other services associated, the buffering and the filtering capacity. When we have excess flooding as well, we have the mangrove is going to slow down by virtue of the root system. It slows down that huge amount of water with sediment that's leaving the terrestrial environment. So there's that huge filtering activity that takes place in the mangroves. So we should be extremely careful with our mangroves and uh, protect these because we want to protect the goods and services that are inherent to the mangroves. That, that's essentially the, the situation that exists. So one of the interesting aspects of um, the restoration project is an attempt to use the replanted forest as carbon sequestration. The trees, uh, and this is natural vegetation being replanted, um, takes carbon dioxide out of the air and converts it into wood. That's a, that's a good thing, um, carbon sequestration. And there was even an attempt to see if a value could be put on that. Um, and uh, these are new developments for Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. So it's being followed by people around the world as to, uh, you know, Trinidad and Tobago giving some value to a natural ecosystem rather than thinking, um, as happened many years ago, uh, probably 50 years ago or so, it was thought that it was of no value and the best thing that could be done is actually to fill it in for the most part and convert it to agriculture and rice and, and other, other forms of agriculture. So in conclusion, we asked one final question and that was, are wetlands worth protecting? 99% uh, of respondents from both communities indicated they thought that wetlands should be protected. So this is a good sign for conservation given the many interesting benefits we found that wetlands offer to humans and the environment. But one thing I wanted to mention that I personally didn't observe from the responses that were given was the role of wetlands in water provisioning and in turn the hydrological functions of wetlands. They are important in provisioning of water and related goods and services. And I was looking up some information on the river and I found on the biodiversity government website of Trinidad and Tobago their summary of the river in terms of hydrological values they noted no special hydrological values known. Given that the Naga Dam is located in this area and the huge role that indirectly water has in rice, wetland, birds and so on, I think it's something that could be revised. I thank you for coming along on this journey.
that's what chase me around. And like people who come on the beach, the fishing and lime and thing, they throw a lot of bottles, cups, plates, all kind of thing, you know. And just pull to the area, plastics, you know. Plastic so we had to kind of enlighten them, like when they come by the beach, walk with a little bag, put a little garbage, and whatnot and whatnot, so you keep your place clean, we're going to clean after you. So make the thing nice for everybody. Mm -hmm.